Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Carrie Brinsden, and I am joined by our fabulous superintendent of Umbel ISD, Dr. Guy Sconzo. Carrie, thank you. It's good to see you. Oh, it's great to see you, and thank you to our audience for tuning in to June's edition of Your Schools. Guy, we've got a wonderful show planned today. You know, Carrie, school may be out. But uh, we're going to look back and, and, and really share with all of you some amazing, amazing stories in Umbliest. I am continually impressed, Guy, of our students, our teachers. Um, each show, the, the levels raised. Um, and one of my favorite segments that we've got that I'm so looking forward to meeting these is our slam poets from Humble High School. Isn't that impressive? Oh my gosh. Very impressive. We're even going to introduce you to a student poet laureate. I mean for the whole Houston region. Very, very cool. We're going to learn about uh, Humble ISD Education Foundation grant that was actually spun off and was awarded some more monies from a, a outside uh, opportunity that was uh, uh, very interesting to learn about, so fun meeting them and some mm -hmm. students that have uh, uh, benefiting from that grant. Um, and we've got lots of other fun stuff Absolutely. on our plate. Absolutely. So stick with us, it's a great show, and Guy and I will be back. Thanks for coming back. And you know, you only need to drive around the community to get a real sense very quickly that we're growing and we're growing big time uh, in every way. Literally thousands of new homes are going up throughout the school district. So we're pleased that our board, set, board segment um, for this show is gonna key in on our board building and planning committee. We've got two of the members of that committee uh, with us. Mr. Robert Sitton. Robert, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. And Brent Engelagi. Yes, sir. Brent chairs the board building and planning yeah. committee. And, and Brent, I don't know if you, you've got a good sense of timing or not. I mean, we're in very, very rapid yeah. growth. We are. We are. And that's that's a great thing about the building and planning committee is, you know, we've we've looked at this for a long time. We didn't just wake up yesterday and think, hey, let's build some schools. You know, this, <laughs> this has been a process. That's this right. has been coming. And, uh, you know, in addition to the two that we're really hot on right now, the elementary 28, middle school 9, we've, we've got a vision for the next really 10 years. So it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. I've been on the board the building and planning committee since its inception what five years ago I think now that's right so it's uh, it's a lot of fun it's I think my favorite committee so it's good mm -hmm. well, and you mentioned it being a, being a process and, uh -huh. and it certainly has been Robert um, if there's one thing I think that marks our board um, um, particularly as we're entering to a year where you're leading the board mm -hmm. as the board president um, is you are very much a board that um, is dead serious about being data driven when mm -hmm. making decisions. Mm -hmm. So as that relates to growth, talk about, um, so what data comes your way and what is it telling you? Well, you know, the, the, as, as you know, and, and most of our viewers know, we do a, we do a pass a study uh, basically every two years. And, uh, and that allows us to do two things, plan for the future and also it's a big part of our budgeting process to figure out how many teachers we're going to need to and how many students we're going to have each year. Uh, and as you know, I mean, we're growing at more than 1,000 students a year. It, it's, it's crazy. Well, the PASA numbers help us help us determine that. Uh, the one thing, when I first got on the board, I guess, back in 2011, um, I didn't really understand PASA because I would look at the PASA numbers and then I'd go to a campus and it would say, well, this campus can hold 200 more students. Well, what I had to understand and what I've talked to a lot of people about is, is it's a lot of it has to do with campus utilization and, and all the new programs that, that are unfunded mandates, if you will, and so forth. And so we've had to use classrooms for labs and special ed and different programs. So. Uh, that's why we, uh, during last school year, we authorized uh, Dr. Brown to do a full facility study to see how we're utilizing those facilities uh, from the rooftops to the to the landscaping and what do they need, you know. So we're not just talking about 
new schools, we're talking about looking at all of our schools. What do they need to to be up, updated, upgraded? We may have some, some tear down and rebuilds in the future. We don't know yet until we get this study back. We may have wing additions. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on right now, but PASA is a very distinct part of that because the, the, the final number that I see from them is they're generally spot on with the number of students that we have. They may not know exactly where they're all going, they know where the houses are and, and their formula to figure out how many students we have or, or are going to have has been pretty spot on since 2011 since I've been involved. Yeah. Well, it's easy for somebody that lives in the district to drive around and to ascertain where I think the growth is. But I'm interested to hear from the two of you of areas in our district where you anticipate seeing um, these new schools being built. Well, of course, the big the big area is, of course, along the Beltway 8 corridor. That's that's the driving force of all the new homes down in that area. So that's where the bulk of the next, you know, seven schools are going to be down in that area. There's certain areas up in the Kingwood area that are popping up and growing, but, but really, for the most part, you know, unlike it's uh, unless it's a, a tear down, rebuild, it's there's not going to be a new school uh, up there in Kingwood. It's going to be in the southern part of the district. So um, it's exciting, though. That's that's just it's just really neat. We were, we're in the process of finishing uh, acquisition of the land, uh, and uh, that should be done probably by the time this this airs. So that's exciting. It's good. good stuff. Yep. Good you know, if, if I can piggyback on that, and 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 so yeah, most of the growth is is uh, I call it the 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 golden triangle. It's Lois Lake Houston Parkway, the Beltway at Corridor, and a Tascosita Road. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where most of the growth right. is coming. But you know, we have new development in Kingwood, so uh, that's where we're going to have to look at boundaries. Where are those kids really going to go to school? You know, what makes sense? There's three elementary schools fairly close to that new development, uh, and then again, as I mentioned and, and Brent mentioned again, uh, there may be possibility. Uh, down the road for some tear down rebuilds because we've got some older schools that probably need either need a facelift or may just need to be replaced. Well, and I, and I like to hear you guys talk about it. It's not just about new schools. It's taking care of that's, the schools that's that are correct. already in existence. That, and that's a big, that's going to be a big point, point of reference going forward uh, because we do have older schools uh, on both sides of the river, so to sure. speak. Uh, and some, some have had facelifts, some haven't. And, uh, and those need to be addressed. You know, they're winding us down, but I want to really cycle back to Brent's reference to process because I wish there was a way that people in general could just appreciate how much time and deliberations you all go through uh, to plan eight years out, ten years out, and, and try to stay as much ahead of that growth curve as possible. So two things. Um, one, uh, to Carrie's point. The board recently sold bonds um, from the bond 2008 referendum, and that's going to fund purchase of land and for new campuses and elementary 28 and, and middle school 9. Tell us quickly, if you would, about that bond sale um, from the standpoint of we were fortunate enough to have our bond rating increase, um, but I think everybody needs to know, so, mm -hmm. so what was the outcome of that sale from a taxpayer standpoint? You know, from, a, you want to take no, your your finance. Committee. Okay, <laughs> so so I, I do serve on the finance committee as well. So uh, part of that part of that bond sale, we did refunding as well. So a couple of things with the uh, the better bond rating that Umbelasti received due to our. Uh, our finance department and our fiscal responsibility, um, we were able to offer new bonds uh, instead of at the traditional 5% down in the 3% range. Uh, all of our bonds, we don't extend out over 20 years. So we're, we're on in that intermediate term area also. Uh, we were also able to refund older bonds and saving the district an additional $25 million in interest costs. So over the last uh, over the last roughly 10 years with refunding, we've saved the taxpayers over $35 million in real money, uh, not to mention the, the cheaper savings on the lower interest costs on the new bonds being issued. Yeah, really. Thank you both very, very much. Um, and, and truly, no one gives time and energy um, when you could be doing lots of other things. No one gives time and energy like the two of you to our board and to our district. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And planning for that future is, is really important. It is very important. I wish we could also handle traffic, but <laughs> unfortunately not in our scope. That's right. Please stay with Carrie and I. We'll be right back.